Okay, EJ, so um, where are tickets available for people that, that cannot wait to go and uh, cheer on the 671 team? Yeah, we just um, launched ticket sales on guamtime.net. Um, there'll be a link there and it'll have all the details for the one game uh, ticket price on the 26th or the 28th. Uh, we play two games against Chinese Taipei. And then there's also a special price for uh, uh, a two game package. So if you know you wanna go to both games, um, there's a all the details are there in terms of the requirements as we know them today anyway. Um, and we, we will be required, or spectators will be required to uh, show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within 72 hours. Uh, and they'll do temperature checks and, and other protocols uh, uh, before admissions. Excellent. So we're trying to create a really nice, safe environment uh, to watch uh, a major international sporting event uh, in the near future. Now, that is an interesting point, because, I mean, there, there is something to be said about, you know, playing in front of your home crowd on your on your native yeah. soil. So how, how exactly or how excited are the boys to be able to like to play on Guam and be able to like, you know, to represent the island right here? How oh, much of an awesome. advantage does that look? Yeah, I think I think it's just the feeling is already there. Um, the game we played in 2020, uh, early 2020 against New Zealand, uh, you know, was a game where we were um, definitely an underdog. Uh, but the experience uh, and and the just the feeling we got from the crowd uh, was was unmatched by anything we've we've all been a part of uh, playing in games here because it's it's representing Guam in front of your home crowd and and it was just a really uh, good energy coming from the crowd that night. So unfortunately, we weren't able to play the other games that were scheduled uh, here on Guam through 2020. And you know we moved on to this final qualification game that was actually supposed to be uh, in Indonesia, and and then Indonesia's uh, entire program got pushed to, to next year. But this final qualification game against Chinese Taipei is is a big one for us to uh, to get past and and potentially advance uh, in the near future to more games, to more high level games. Now, I know your staff, you guys, you know, obviously like experience, you guys have worked together, you know, running the team as well as playing with each other and everything. And um, knowledge is power, obviously, and that that does weigh as a big advantage. Uh, what do you guys know about the Taipei team, some of their tendencies, some of their, you know, the strengths that they have and how do you plan to to counter that? Well, it's it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of video um, out there and just like there's a lot of video on our team now uh, from from recent years. And um, what's difficult is from 2019 to today, you actually um, see two or three different variations of the Chinese Taipei men's national team. Um, you know, it's a large country, they have professional players there. And depending on availability, I'm sure, and the timing, uh, we actually see, you know, quite a, a, a deep uh, roster and so, you know, trying to pick up on specific players' tendencies and, and um, some of the keys on their team is tough because it's, the teams have been different tournament to tournament. Um, that being said, it's still the, you know, their coaching staff and um, system uh, seems to be pretty consistent. So we're more so preparing for a style, uh, preparing for uh, some of the possibilities and, you um, that's kind of the difficult thing um, where we only have a two game, basically a two game tournament. And we have to be ready for everything from man to man defense, full court defense, half court defense, zone defense. Um, we, you know, um, offensively, uh, uh, we, you know, we are defensively, we're, we, we're pretty consistent with uh, what we do. Um, and so we feel like we can dictate dictate their offense and and uh, control the tempo uh, with with how we play defensively um, but more so not sure what to expect from them and and so you just really have to be prepared for anything mm -hmm. now what does our team look like because i remember when i was covering the um that match the the exhibition uh against new zealand you know we had, we had a lot of size and you know you had ty and you had curtis and everything like that and it was a nice mix of of yeah. uh, aggressiveness and speed and everything like that what do you what does the roster look like going into this game and, and how do you plan to manage that? Yeah, it's, it's actually evolved quite a bit since uh, 2020. Um, but we do expect to have, uh, we actually will have uh, some good size. Um, but 
the, the roster has actually gotten a lot younger. Um, so some of the size on the bench are uh, newcomers like Matt Fergerger, um, who's, who's uh, you know, now working on his college career. Um, and uh, I think was still in high school the last time we, the men played here on Guam. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we've moved him up and uh, he's, he, you know, can potentially get some play time. Jonathan Galloway um, is, is definitely going to be here. Ty Wesley, McKelly Wesley as kind of our veteran uh, post players, Ben Borja. Um, we, we, you know, not, we haven't really announced the final roster yet and there's some strategy to that, but, uh, for the most part, we have our core. Uh, not everyone is confirmed, but we have a, a pretty good uh, core, you know, plus, you know, I work with, you know, no more than 20 players in our men's roster at a given time. So it doesn't change too much uh, over, over the last couple of years. It's just um, a couple new young additions and a couple players that were here in 2020 have uh, since then retired from the national team. So um, yeah, I'm excited for, for the new, new look team Guam to, to get out there. Mm -hmm. Now, as long as I've known you, I've always, I've always known, like, you're very, very optimistic and, you know, you, you, you have a vision of where we could, we could get, but I'm going to ask you for like a, an honest, no BS answer, you know, from as the head of the national team and everything like that. Um, do we have a really good chance at advancing? And as the guy in charge of the whole, of the whole system of the whole program, what do we have to do to get there? Yeah. Um, like you said, I think I try to be optimistic, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have no choice but to win. And and that you know, over since 2014, um, we're looking back at a FIBA uh, national team record of 32 and two. Um, we, we you know we just go into every game feeling like whether we're the underdog or um, not expected to win by a lot. We we come in you know just being confident in ourselves and. Uh, you know, Chinese Taipei, they're, they're a professional team. They're, they're coaches, they're players, they, they earn a living playing basketball. And we have a mix of guys that, you know, have played in a lot of different places um, that come together to represent Guam. And, and, you know, I think the recent history has shown we've been able to figure out and put in a system that, that works for us. And so um, we're, we're optimistic and depending on who shows up, um, Taiwan has already booked their flights, but we don't have their roster either. But when we see that, we'll kind of take a look and say, okay, this is going to be a big team or a fast team. And, and we'll just be ready to make our adjustments and, and take care of business. And that's what we talk about every time, um, we practice every time we, we get together, um, is, uh, we're going to win this game. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, what, what are going to be the weaknesses that we have to exploit. And um, what do we need to be uh, careful with when it comes to their strengths? Um, so that's, you know, in terms of how we're going to get there. And, and, you know, this has been a long journey, Jason. Um, we didn't know, you know, this was, really wasn't uh, part of a long-term plan because um, I can go back a handful of years where it was all about winning the Pacific Games gold. That was really all we talked about uh, after four straight silvers. Uh, we really wanted to win gold in the Pacific. And after doing that and getting the opportunity to play more of the Asian countries um, and proving to, to everyone that we, we belong in this group and we could definitely play with this group, um, and we went back and won a second gold. And now we have a chance to advance to the top level of Asia. So with this, with this um, you know, by the end of the month, we're going to know uh, whether we're going to graduate to that next level uh, with the likes of China, Japan, Philippines, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, they're, they're already advanced. And so we hope to see those guys next. All right. Okay. And final question, EJ, like, um, you know, um, what I really took away from that last game with New Zealand is especially us as the host nation, right. Was mm -hmm. that when the boys met at center court, you know, New Zealand was doing their ceremonial haka and, you know, you've always preached, you know, good sportsmanship. We're not going to play dirty. We're going to respect our opponent, but by no means are we going to be intimidated or walked all over and everything like that. And and the guys showed a lot of confidence. They showed a lot of poise and they showed a lot of aggression. Um, what is your philosophy on on the attitude that we bring in there? You know, not only when, when you're having the letters G-U-A-M across your chest and everything like that, but being able to say, you know, 
it doesn't matter who we play and everything like that. You are going to get our best game and we're not backing down to anybody. Oh yeah, exactly that. Jason, it's, it's a more than attitude. It's our culture. And we talk about, if you want to have a winning culture um, and, and we believe that the tradition of uh, having a winning culture was around um, even, you know, generations past, we've always had success in Micronesia. Uh, we've even had sex, uh, success in the Pacific. Um, but taking that same culture and saying, whoever we play, um, we're confident that we can play with the best, um, but they're going to underestimate us. And, and I try to just re keep reminding, and it's tough when you, you know, you're, you're rolling on a win streak or, you know, it's been a while since we've, uh, um, you know, had too many losses uh, year after year. And uh, you just have to keep the team motivated and, and remind them that we come from a, a small island and uh, we have um, a lot of pride. And uh, a lot of these countries uh, definitely uh, have made the mistake in the past of, of, of uh, underestimating us. Hmm. And so uh, I think we play with that chip on our shoulder. And um, I think you bring up the Hakka as a good example. Uh, you know, um, our guys immediately, it wasn't really needed to be talked about. They, they, they got together the practice before and they said, uh, as a reminder, we put our toes on the half court line that's as close as you can get to them. And um, that's kind of the message that, that you send is we're right here. And so, you know, to go ahead and show your, your, your um, you know, your culture and your challenge to us, but we're right here ready to face it. Um, and it, it was a, it was an interesting game and I'm not, not going to say things have really would have really gone um, much different in terms of the result, but uh, we learned from that game. We, we did suffer a couple injuries and a couple players got in foul trouble early. And that um, really changed our game plan against New Zealand. And um, since 2020, since that game, uh, we've talked a lot about it and we've worked on a lot of things to try to avoid um, uh, foul trouble, try to be ready to, to go deeper down the bench if needed. Um, and so I think, you know, we're, we're ready. Um, it's just uh, when the when the when the game comes, it's all about just taking care of business at that moment. But we've done everything to prepare for this. All right. Oops.